to enter into our worship experience and celebrating the man and woman of God. Uh, we ain't here to talk about the 49ers or the Chiefs. We're here to celebrate the man and woman of God. Before we go into the beginning of our worship, someone has Sister Vera blocked in the back parking lot. If you'll be so kind and move your car at this time. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. And be glad in
shall rejoice in it and be glad. Test, test. Now, of the 49, oh, I said we weren't going to talk about it. Test. But this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. You'll get it after a while. This day. Yeah. At this time, we give way for our scripture reading by Deacon Morgan, followed by prayer, Dad Williams. Deacon Williams. Good evening, church. I should say afternoon. Our scripture reading is going to be coming from the book of Romans. Chapter 1, I'm going to read verse 16. And the word of God reads, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Amen. I've read uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. Amen. Amen. as we gather in your house this evening. Father, we come to offer praise for you. For you're worthy, you're God Almighty. You're seated on your throne in heaven, and you're sovereign and rulers over all. And then, Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love and kindness. Thy name is hallowed, thy name is holy. Pray thy kingdom come, your will, Father, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we praise you for our daily bread. Then, Father, you said in your word that we would confess our sins. You were faithful and just to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, Lord, I come before you this evening. I ask you to cleanse my heart of anything that hinders fellowship with you at this time. And, Father, fear me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we come praying for your church in these difficult times. You declared we were salt and we are light. But, Father, help us to be salt and light that is useful in the building of your kingdom. And then, Father, we pray for every believer that we all be controlled by the knowledge of your will. You will give each one of us a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of revelation, that we might have a greater knowledge of you. And Father, let that knowledge not only be in our heads, but in our hearts. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Father. As we gather this afternoon, we gather first to honor the man of God. Father, he's been here for 23 years. But Father, I pray for him that you continue to strengthen him, that he himself will know your word and give him the moral courage to follow it. Then Father, we pray for his wife that she will be that constant companion with him, that together the two of them will not grow weary and well-doing, knowing after a while you promise them, all of us, if we faint not, there's a prize at the end. Yeah. And Lord, we know you are our promise keeper, yes. and we praise you. Yes, Lord, we pray for this waiting congregation, that you would just have them to hear your word this day. And not only hear, Father, but hear with a heart, with the intent to go forth and do your word. Lord, we thank you for the mighty God you are. You are our maker. You are our creator. You are our keeper. You are our savior. And we praise you this evening. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for just being God all by yourself. 
thank you, Father, for those times when we were going astray. Your Holy Spirit holds us, Father. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, we thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. and their first ladies, first ladies that are here, you my brothers and sisters in Christ. We're here to celebrate. So at this time, my charge is to introduce the mistress of ceremony. Uh, we used to live on the same street. So she knows my background that I've been delivered from. So we'll leave it there. But she's a lover of God's word. She's a lover of God's people, God's youth. Um, she loves people. She loves sharing the gospel of Christ. I introduced this song to present to others, Sister Charlene English. Can we say amen as she comes? Good afternoon, church. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our pastor and wife's 23rd anniversary. Thank you for coming and celebrating with us on Friday. We had a wonderful time on Friday. Um, Pastor Granger, I don't see him, he said that he was the appetizer. And I, I like fine dining, so when I get an appetizer, <laughs> I expect a good platter. And he, he, his appetizers came with obligations. <laughs> pa Pastor Granger said, a gospel preacher has to be an obligated gospel preacher. And I, I, I pictured a charcuterie board. Y'all know the charcuterie board. Well, on his charcuterie board, he had three meats. He had, the preacher has an obligation to preach the gospel. The preacher has an obligation to Christ. And the preacher has an obligation to preach the whole word. Don't water it down. You got to tell the whole story. So, so now, now that Pastor Granger gave us a nice appetizer on Friday, we're looking for the full course meal from Pastor H.H. H. Les the third later on. 
All right. Y'all, y'all hungry. You're hungry. So at this time, we will come to you with a selection from the New Hope Baptist Choir. <laughs>
Amen, amen. We have a right. Lift them up, lift them up. At this time, we're going to have one of our babies that grew up in the church come to you with a spoken word. I, I have to say, this young man, I've known him since he was a baby. And he would come to my house and play, make beats on my computer. And I told him, when he goes viral with the music he's making, I'm going to sell those beats because I saved them on my computer. But please welcome Brother Kyle Anderson with the spoken word. Amen, amen. Um, I'll just grab this real quick. Uh, first, giving honor to God who's ahead of my life. Respect to Pastor Carter and wife. Um, congratulations. Congratulations on uh, your anniversary. Uh, it's a blessing. You guys are a great example for us all of what God can do. And got a little something I wrote. Um, it's a spoken word, no beat or anything like that. Uh, it says, Surely not a sheep, but the Lord is my shepherd, moved by the spirit like he must have a weapon. Interrogated faith, certain times, can't question. Jesus put a mustache and wig on my blessings. But don't disguise his glory. Praise is mandatory. The devil coming for me. Said it's gonna get gory. Right. Cup just overflowing. Mine on him this morning. Hardback edition. They still don't know my story. Cause he knows my lame. Who you know that raised the dead and he can cure a lame? Non believers all of a sudden wanna call his name. I do bad and he's so good, he come and take the blame. Drip detergent on my dirt, so what's a man to gain? Had to call on him so much and use his name in vain. Pretty fixed my situation. Now I'm glad it changed. Every time he ever picked me up, he like it ain't no thing. Thank y'all so much. a praise dance and Deaconess Antonia Parker and Sister Sharonda King.
to be where you are. Gotta be where you are. The Spirit of God in motion. Friday, um, Sister Dandridge did a poem for the gospel preacher, and it, she did a beautiful job, but the gospel preacher also has a wife. So I have a poem for our first lady, and Pastor Carter's only lady, the preacher's wife. A preacher's wife is a strong tower. A silent observer with a mighty power. A preacher's wife with wisdom and knowledge, she gives sound advice. She has the sweetest of smiles that shine so nice. Her warm good mornings will brighten your day. Her touch of comfort helps you feel better along the way. Yes, a preacher's wife with hearty amens and a word of praise for all she meets. She's always the same. She's always a lady. Amen. And she's always, always so sweet. Amen. Amen. Next, we would like to have the Urshers switch out Victory Temple and the New Hope Choir. Could we get a little movement music, please? like to turn turn it over to the minister and the usher for the offering please can the church say amen amen, amen. it's time to worship our Lord in giving as the earth is prepared to come you at home you can, online you can give by NHBC dash seaside.com 
Post Office Box 834, Seaside, California, 93955, or www.givelify.com. At this time, your group captains, if you have not reported to your group captains, um, do so, please. You know what's required or ask of you. And if you can't do that, just do your best. Amen? Amen. Um, I'm going to let Reverend Trope come and lead us in the offering. But as I shared with him on Friday night, if you look on the program, you see your name right behind offering. So we appreciate it if you will help us appreciate the man and woman of God. Amen. Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, we come before you right now. God, just asking you to open up our hearts, Father God, for this time of giving, Father God. Lord, bless the man who have given 23 years of service, Father God. And Father God, open our hearts, Lord God, to give in that manner, Father God. We thank you and we praise your name, in Jesus' name, amen. You are now in the hands of the usher. captains and and the preachers don't have no group captain but um i appreciate you pastor carter I, I, i've learned a lot under you and, and and humble you do it with humility and love and um pastor carter lets me have a little li a little liberty a little little i want you to understand that 
because he don't have a problem pulling my coattail. And he pulls it in love. So we, the preachers, we want to report. We want to report. Uh, but we want Lady Carter to hold this for you. All right. You, you told us <laughs> she got her hand out. <laughs> we were required to mark the tree right here. But Pastor Carter entrusts us. He teaches us. So we went a little bit beyond the tree. We were supposed to mark here. So we marked a little bit up here. And we want to say we love you, we thank you, and we appreciate you. That's right. Pass it over. <laughs> we want to give the pastors opportunity to speak if they so desire. I'm sorry to do this, but I keep telling y'all I don't know what I'm doing. Friday, will y'all help me give Pastor and Sister Carter a hand? I should have did this on Friday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We thank God for them. Uh, uh, Friday, we had a good time. Uh, uh, we're going to have Dr. Lust take us home. I'm like the Detroit Lions, except for we're going to take the points this time, San Francisco. That's okay, Pastor Granger, we forgive you. You gave a good appetizer on Friday. We're just hungry for the meal right now, all right? It's not all right. Again, um, at this time, we will have a A and B selection from Victory Temple Choir. First of all, I'd like to say good afternoon and do give honor God, to God today and to Pastor Carter and lovely Sister Carter, I just wanted to say one thing right quick because um, Pastor Carter is very dear to me. Um, he's on my speed dial. When I had cancer, there were a couple of pastors that I called on speed dial. I called your dad and your grandpa, called my pastor, I called Pastor Carter. And I had a special request that they, when I made my prayer, request. And I just asked him, I tell him, as I go through this journey, I just want a peace of mind when I went through this journey. Because I know there's something going to take me out of here. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to leave out of here. But I just want to have the peace of God. And Pastor Carter prayed for me on more than one occasion. Like I said, he's on my speed dial. I picnic with him and New Hope. Not only that, we were in high school together in Monterey High. So he's very special to me. He trusts me. He allowed four of his members to go all the way to London with me. Not only once, but he also let them go to South Africa with me. I appreciate that trust, Pastor. As we were celebrating you on Friday, um, your theme, Romans 1 and 16, choir, if you come with me. Brother, Gre Brother Gregory, come up here. And we're going to do this song. We haven't been singing together long as the relaunch choir, but this song is a testament for you. So you pray for us. Everyone. 
to set you free. Hey, hey. Set them free. Set them free. Shout now.
we keep the beat going? Can you keep the beat going? Ushers, please change out the choirs, Bethel and Victory Temple. Can we keep the beat going? comes up, um, I would like to thank everyone for coming out and celebrating our pastor and wife's 23rd anniversary. We had a wonderful time on Friday night. Sunday, we, we've gone higher, and I'm looking forward to my meal from Pastor H.H. Lusk. So I thank you for putting up with me for Friday and today. And after you hear from Miss Liberta Laurel, you will be in the hands of the pulpit. Thank you. Good afternoon. Congratulations. I'm gonna sing a song um, that means a lot to me and I think it's appropriate in any given situation and celebration.
This time, I'm going to bring up the proud pastor of the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, and he will do the introduction of his family member, pastor of the Greater Exodus Baptist Church. Did I say it right? So at this time, can we say man as Pastor Harold Bus comes? sat there and I said how can I do this this pulpit has a lot of history for the lust family preachers when pastor Franklin was here my brother would be here preaching my father would be sitting and I'd be back there in the minister's seat The last time I preached with memory here, specific, that next Friday, my father passed away. I said, God, what can I say to talk about your preacher? There's a history of, of impact connected to this. So how do I introduce your preacher? He said, simply tell the truth. The Lusk dynasty of preaching is evident and real. They were they. We are we, and today he is he. The proud pastor of Greater Exodus, rephrase that, the Greater Exodus Baptist Church in the great city of Philadelphia, 100 North Philadelphia, my nephew, the Reverend Herbert Hoover Lusk, the third, and just in case you missed it, the fourth generation.
Someone testified about the Carters. That's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're beautiful people. I always tell them both of them when I see them how beautiful they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing that I noticed Hallelujah. is I watched them through some trials. Hallelujah. And they were still just as beautiful. So this is a little song I wrote about 20 years ago at the Bethel Church. And it just asks why you lift your hands and why you lift your voice. Hallelujah. Come on, praise God with us. Oh, yes. him tonight for how awesome he is 
Come on, I said thank him, not me. Thank him for how awesome he is. We'll just stick with this one. When it works, give it to me. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Well, it's good to be here with you. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And um, we are excited for this anniversary. Come on, give God praise for Pastor Carter and his wife. Amen. Amen. And um, this is not visiting. This is home. My, my roots are here. <laughs> So it's good to be here uh, with all of you and being a, to see my beloved uh, grandmother and yeah. Yeah. amen and have memories seeing my uncle in the choir. Where he at? Oh, he done left and went somewhere. And then what can I say about all these choirs? Y'all almost sent me into a spiritual coma. <laughs> In a couple more minutes, I was going to run all over this church if y'all sung one more song. <laughs> this is a wonderful occasion to be here and to see all these great preachers of the gospel. And um, what can I say about young Dunham this morning? I was watching online, man. My, if my daddy was here, he'd say, I'm going to preach whatever's left. <laughs> um, and, and this is to give honor where honor is due. We do not take for granted that God gives generational blessings. We do not take that for granted. And so we thank God um, for them. Um, to the first and only lady of this house. Uh, Monty, uh, I love you, what can I say? Um, my family knows that you have been walking with the Lust family for a number of years. And we thank you for how you have walked with my uncle, Pastor Carter. And we give God praise for Sister Carter in the house. Come on, we can do better than that. seeing all these faces and it's just yeah Murray Ron Johnson who had a hand in raising all these men but to Pastor Carter And to this date, to this date, the darkest day of my life, you were present. And I've said this to you in Philadelphia, but I must say it before your people on your anniversary. I thank you for being obedient first to the spirit, but then being obedient to my father's instructions. And he came knowing that my father would not join him in that pulpit. 
but he got up and did what he was supposed to do. I thank you. I've said it already, but I want to say it in front of your folk because they need to know the kind of pastor they have. They need to know your loyalty and your commitment. If you can give me a little bit more volume in there, my friend back there, please. Thank you. Are they back there? What y'all sitting in the back for? Y'all, oh, y'all, I'm gonna get y'all after this. I ain't got time. Y'all supposed to be in the front. Y'all know better than that. But it's good to see my aunt and my cousins back there, man. Y'all in the back dipping their heads. That's all right. I'm gonna get y'all after service. Y'all know better than that. You're supposed to be sitting in the front. But good to see you as well. In the interest of time, I know that um, folks' mind are on Super Sunday. <laughs> and some of y'all, your team ain't in it no way, so I don't. <laughs> now y'all, now all of a sudden we got all these 49er fans. We got, we got all these Chiefs fans. We ain't hear none of y'all at the beginning of the season. But it's all right. I'm going to hurry up and get it. Is that Deacon Stanford back there? Yeah. Hey, man. Good to see you. And Lucille, where is she at? Oh, hey. I'm sorry, y'all. This is my family. Hey. Hey. All right. Now the folk like, hurry up, preacher, and preach. I'm a... I'm going to do what the Lord has asked us to do. Pray with me. Father, I thank you for your word. And I pray, God, that you speak clearly uh, through your manservant. And, Lord, you give me quadruple dose of preaching power. I ask, Lord, that you allow me to preach if it may be my last time. Please. In the mightiest name I know. In Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, first the Jew and also for the Greek. I believe that's enough for today. For a few brief moments, I want to preach from the subject. And Pastor Carter, if you allow me to preach from your perspective today, what else am I supposed to use? What else am I supposed to use? A church without a gospel-centered purpose and a gospel-centered preacher is no church at all. As we were on the road yesterday and as I was preaching some hours away, we were talking about the fact how the church is moving in a different direction. And I don't want to say the church because God is in control of the church, but there are people who are in stewardship positions of the church. 
that have decided that they would rather do something different. As a matter of fact, there is an identity crisis amongst the church. There is a fractured witness. It is Jesus himself that said, by this, men and women will know that you are my disciples. And then he goes on to say that we should let our light so shine before men that our heavenly father is glorified. As a matter of fact, the, the witness is so fractured that we have not even listened to the words of Jesus himself. It is Jesus in Matthew 9, 12 and 13 that says, when Jesus heard what they were saying, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick he goes on to declare, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. He said, for I did not come to call the righteous, but I came to call sinners to repentance. And what needs to happen, brother pastors and brother preachers that are joined with me in the pulpit, is that the church needs a removal of confused, careless, and corrupt leadership. I want to say that again. I'm saying what the church needs is the removal of confused, careless, and corrupt leadership. But I don't want to trouble you with that. I, I, I want to get to the topic at hand because you've had a pastor for 23 years. And that's not the kind of pastor that you've had. Your pastor is not careless, is not confused, he is not corrupt, he is not in that position. But when I think of my friend, my uncle, uh, Pastor Carter, I think of what it says in Jeremiah 3.15. Are you interested? Is I will give you pastors according to my heart, which will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And I, and I chose this subject matter because I wanted to use a, a, a Pastor Carter's perspective today. I wanted uh, us to see that Pastor Carter is saying that after 23 years, what else do you want me to use? I, I, I've stood and I've declared the promises of God. I, I have stood on the gospel. I, I, I know that we got new screens in services now and we got new kinds of seats in services and we have new kinds of styles and all that kind of stuff and those things are good but what else do you want me to use? I, I, I don't have any gimmicks. I don't have any slogans. I, I don't have any tricks up my sleeve. I, I, all I can do is just stand on the gospel that God has given me to preach. And, and if you don't mind, Pastor Carter, I just want to tell him how you really feel. That this, is, this is how he feels in response to anybody who thinks he should do something new. God, there is a tendency, brother pastors and brother preachers, that are joined with me in the pulpit to try something new. There is always something that comes up that looks like that it is better than the gospel. But how many know that the cross still works? <laughs> it was Jesus that said, if I be lifted up, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. It doesn't matter if they're rich. It doesn't matter if they're poor. It doesn't matter if they're black. It doesn't matter if they're white. It doesn't matter if they're male. It doesn't matter if they're female. It doesn't matter if they come from the hood. It doesn't matter if they have a house on the hills. It doesn't matter what they got in their bank account. The fact of the matter is, if you just lift me up, if you just lift up the gospel, if you just lift up my name, then I'll draw all men unto me. But I want to give you the perspective, a, a true perspective of a pastor. Do you mind? And then I'll be on the highway back to San Francisco. There's an understanding of the perspective of a true pastor. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 through 12, you will see the understanding of the perspective of a true pastor. 2 Corinthians 4 says, therefore, since we have this ministry, we have received mercy. We do not lose heart and we have not, we, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. For we do not preach ourselves. 
God, aren't you glad that for 23 years Pastor Carter wasn't preaching himself? Aren't you glad that he was preaching the name of Jesus? Is there about five folk in here from New Hope that can say, I thank God he wasn't preaching himself because man is limited. But it's God himself that can do all things. But look at the perspective. It's a perspective. Paul says, and this is the context of the text, because everybody used sometimes this passage, but it's really not for you. It's really for the preacher who carries the gospel. And Paul says, but we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not ourselves. I, I'm in this weak and feeble body. But God allows his power to show forth. Now, can I transfer from Pastor Carter and transfer to about seven of you and say, is there anybody here that can say, it's not me, but it's the God working in me? I wish I could take credit for everything that I do. I wish I could take credit for everything that's happening in my life. But is anybody who can say it's through Christ who strengthens me, I can do all things. I, I can go anywhere I need to go. I don't have to be ashamed. And so what Paul is giving the perspective and what Pastor Carter did for 23 years is that he pastored, he preached, and he prayed through pain. Am I covering it, Pastor? Not only did he pastor and preach and pray through pain, but he pastored and preached and prayed through perplexities. He pastored and preached and prayed through a pandemic. He pastored and preached and prayed through persecution. He pastored and preached and prayed, watch this, through the own pruning in his own life. It was God in the Gospel of John in the 15th chapter that said in order for you to bear fruit, that I got to prune you. I, I got to cut you sometime. Pastor Carter, is there any points in your 23 years where you said, oh, God, that hurts. Ouch, God, I wish you didn't have to take that out of my life. God, I wish you didn't have to strip that out of my life. But you declared just that Paul said that in your weakness, his strength was made perfect and his grace is sufficient. And most gladly, you read the glory in your infirmities, knowing that the power of Christ rests upon you. That's the perspective of pastoring. And he did all this because the power of Jesus Christ, the power of the gospel. Is there anybody here that understands the power of the gospel? That understands it can change some stuff in your life. But in order for me to get you to see his perspective of why he's saying, what else should I use? It's not only do you need to understand the perspective of a true pastor, but then you need to understand the platform of a true pastor. There are some here that would wish me to give you all kinds of nice flowery words, but I can do nothing for you but to preach Christ crucified. We have a lot of preachers that want to sound good and they want to make people think that they are intelligent and they want to make people think that they are so enlightened and that they have so much articulation of their tongue. But how many know that you can know the whole encyclopedia and the whole dictionary and not know God? God, I wish I had a witness here in this church. But you got to understand the platform of a true pastor. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 and 5, and it says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech. I want you to think I sound good. I want you to think that I got wisdom, but it is not about my speech. It is not about my wisdom, but I was declaring to you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you, huh, Except Christ him crucified. It was him that saying it was not my speech. And my preaching was not with persuasive words of human wisdom. But in demonstration of the spirit and of the power. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men. But in the wisdom of God. Pastor Carter I just got a sneaky suspicion. That time after time you didn't stand. Trying to get the people to point to you. But you said look at me. And in spite of me. God 
can still move uh, in spite of my frailties, uh, in spite of me not having it, uh, in spite of me not being uh, like some other big pastor. I'm going to stand on Christ uh, crucified. And so you understood the frailty of yourself. Uh, you didn't have time to be doing things uh, that other people were doing. Look at how Paul was. Paul, and just like your pastor, is a gospel pastor and not a gloating pastor. You know, you know we got some pastors that like to gloat and point to themselves. They want all the attention on themselves. But aren't you glad that you got a pastor that was not pointing to himself, but he was pointing to Jesus. He understood that he was frail. He understood that Christ had given him everything. Paul understood how frail he was. He understood that he was a blasphemer. He understood that he was a persecutor. He was understood that he had gone against God's will. But what he said is, he says, I am chief sinner among you, but I have experienced and obtained this mercy so I can point you to the mercy. That's his platform. He was never saying that I should be up here, that I deserve to be up here, and that I'm supposed to be here. No. He understood that he is what he is by the grace of God. Can you look at your pastor and tell that he understood that he is what he is by the grace of God? It's like Paul, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. The grace that was given to me, it was not given to me in vain. It was not given to me in vain. But not only was he not a gloating pastor, he wasn't a grading pastor. He was a gospel pastor. Somebody say he's not grading folk. You know how them spiritual sanctimonious people. Y'all ain't got them in Seaside, huh? But we got some, we got some of them in Philadelphia. We got some folk. We got some folk in Philadelphia that only think it's four sins. They only think it's four sins in all the Bible. So they'll beat up on all the drunk folk. God, y'all getting quiet in here. They'll beat up on all the fornicators. They'll beat up on all the homosexuals. They'll beat up on all the murderers. But then the person who's been unforgiven for 30 years, who's had bitterness in their spirit, the person who's been lying every single day, just because you see it don't mean you ain't infected with it. God, I wish y'all would have church with me today. But what he said is, I'm not a grading pastor, but I understand what the word of God does. See, the gospel puts everybody in perspective. See, the word of God says that all have sinned. God, just in case your neighbor don't believe it, turn to him and say, neighbor, that includes you. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so for 23 years, your pastor didn't just try to go after four or five folk, but he said, everybody who has come short of the glory, you need to come up in here and run in this house because there's a Savior that loves you. And how many know he's sweeter than sweet? How many know he's the sweetest name that you can ever call? How many know that he can fix every single problem you have? How, how many know that he can do anything? He can change anybody. Is there anybody here who he's changed your life? God, don't fool me here. Don't, don't fool me here. Don't, don't fool me. Is there anybody here that can look back over their life and see that the Lord looked beyond all of your faults? and saw every last one of your knees. Is there anybody here that can thank God that the blood is still covering me? There's some stuff that you did 25 years ago that the Lord is still covering. God, there's some stuff that you did that you didn't even confess, but he still paid for it. Is there anybody here that can say, Pastor Carter, don't use nothing different. Keep using the gospel of Jesus Christ. Y'all ain't going to push me. I ain't ready for that. It's not a grading pastor. 
not a grading pastor. He understood. But then not only is he not a grading pastor, he's a gospel pastor. He's not a gutless pastor. All right. All right. Yeah, he, he went wherever God sent him. Brother preachers, brother pastors, you do understand that in that 37th chapter of Ezekiel, it was God that asked a question to Ezekiel. It says that the Spirit of God set him down in the midst of a valley. And they were all dry. Lo, they were very dry. And he asked him a question. Son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, Lord, you know. He said, I don't know. That's what you said when you came here. I, I remember when you were in Philadelphia. I, we talked about it. I remember when you were the youth pastor. But God took you and brought you in the midst of a valley. And he asked you a question. And he said, son of man, can these bones live? He said, son of man, do you see the trouble that is around? Do you see all the devastation? Somebody got to come on and hurry up and get on this organ. I'm almost ready to fly. But he said, son of man, can these bones live? He said, son of man, can these bones live? And you said, Lord, you know. You said, Lord, you know what's going on in Monterey. You know what's going on in Seaside. And he said, said, Lord, you said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he told you to say, oh, ye, try bones, hear the word of the Lord. Y'all excuse me for a minute, but Lord, Lord, help your boy to preach this thing like I feel it in my chest. Oh, Lord, help me now to declare what thus saith the Lord. I can remember when daddy told you to come and pastor this church and you were uncertain of what was supposed to happen. You were uncertain of what God wanted to do in your life. But you made a decision and you said come what may in my life I will serve the Lord. And I got to tell you something before I get on the highway to get on my flight to go back to Philadelphia. I don't want you to be discouraged in this society. There's going to be some preachers that are going to turn to another gospel. Matter of fact, they're going to do what other preachers have been doing. They're going to allow their people to heap up for them because they got itching ears. But I'm telling you, like Paul told Timothy, to preach the word in season and out of season, whether they show up or whether they get mad, Lord, Lord, help your boy to preach this same like I feel it in my chest. You know they tried the same thing with Peter, James, and John. In the book of Acts, they told them that you can't teach in that name no more. They said if you mention that name any longer, we'll put you in jail. We'll throw you away. And they threatened to beat them. But then I heard Peter and John say, you got to decide in your mind if it's right for me to follow you or follow God. But we can't help but to speak what we have seen and heard. And you've seen through the years that God has delivered people. And how do you know that? Because the song that says that love lifted me, it's your testimony. The songwriter said, I was sinking deep in sin. I was far from the peaceful shore. I was very deeply stained within. I was sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted me. Now safe am I. It was love that lifted you. Nothing else could help. It was love that lifted you. And so for 23 years, you stood here and declared the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I got one more thing to tell you. In order for y'all to understand that he can't use nothing else, you got to go to know the passion of a true pastor. And the passion of the true pastor is his theme scripture that says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto 
and salvation to them that believe. What's wrong with y'all? I'm the one preaching while y'all sitting down. Lord, help your boy to preach just for a couple more minutes. Lord, help your boy to preach until yokes are destroyed. Lord, help your boy to preach until somebody understands the power of the gospel. I heard the reason why they had to keep speaking the name of Jesus. It's because just a couple chapters before they got to that point, there was a man that was laying at the gate called Beautiful. In other words, he was laying outside of church and all the church folk was walking past him. All the church folk with they sedated themselves, with they trifling self, with all their stuff. They had all their garments, but no Jesus in their heart. And I heard that man, he said, I need some silver and gold. But I heard what Paul, what, what Peter, and John said, they said, silver and gold have I none, but such I give unto you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. The more you preach Jesus, all you got to do is say, rise up and walk. That's all you got to do is preach Jesus and say, rise up and walk. That's all you got to do is preach Jesus and go to somebody and say, get off your paper. Rise up and walk. That's all you got to do is keep preaching Jesus and say, rise up and walk. Keep preaching the gospel. Go to him and say, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. I got I got the power of the Holy Ghost. She ain't going nowhere. Just keep preaching and say, rise up and walk. They may be a little weak. All you got to do is grab them by the hand and the power of the Holy Ghost will allow them to move. That's all you got to do is keep preaching the gospel. Go out in the valley and just keep preaching the gospel. You don't have another weapon. Your weapon is his word. That's why you got to hide the word of God in your heart that you might not sin against thee. You got to keep on preaching that. You got to keep on preaching that he changes the drunk, that he changes the whoremonger, that he changes the pimp, that he changes the liar, that he changes the hoe, that he changes the adulterer, that he changes, he changes everybody. Once they get the name of Jesus, is there anybody here that will not think of robbery to shout Jesus? Just say, Pastor, keep on preaching. It's the only weapon you got. That's the only weapon you got. I came in for you. I didn't come in for nobody else. I didn't come in for nobody else. I'm not here to show my preaching ability. Look at me, all. I came here for you. I ain't worried about these folk. I came here to encourage you. If they want to hear me preach, they can cut on YouTube. I had an assignment. I didn't come for any other reason. You stand up next week, you tell them, what else do you want me to use? Tricks ain't going to do it. Slogans ain't going to do it. The gospel. He preaching the gospel. 
If they get mad, they leave, let them leave. That's what the gospel does. Either it compels you or it repels you. Don't change nothing. You got all these churches trying to do all this stuff and it has no power in it. Don't get caught up in it. And they're going to try. It's going to be some people that come. Oh, they doing this over here. Oh, we got to have the inclusion. We got to do this over here. Don't mention sin. Don't tell nobody that they sinning. Don't tell nobody they got to get right with God. Don't tell them about sanctification. Don't tell them that he wants them to conform. Don't tell them none of that. Just tell them that he loves them and that's it. And they'll be okay. Don't you give in to that. It's a fad, and those churches will die. Any church that will not preach Jesus, it dies. I had one assignment. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to go. I know y'all want to watch the Super Bowl. I'm getting ready to get on the highway. But let me do what I got to do for him. Do not change. If my father was standing right here, he would say the same thing to you. Preach the gospel, man. He don't move by no other stuff. That's what people don't understand. It's not a style. It's not a style. The power is not in the style. God has honored your labor. Because for 23 years, you've got up and declared what the gospel is. You've, you've lived through it. You've lived through it. Book of Timothy says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. You've preached in pain. You've preached when your wife had pain. You were faithful during a pandemic. Do you understand that thousands of churches have closed down? But he kept this one breathing. Because Jesus says this, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I want y'all to point to Pastor Carter and I want, you to, I want you to say this to him, point to him. Say, Pastor Carter, Pastor Carter don't you use nothing else. The gospel is enough. God bless you. Let every heart say amen. amen. Come on, let's say amen again. Amen. Give the man of God a big hand. Give the man of God a... My, my, my. He preached out of his heart. What else do you want him to use? Nothing but... The gospel. He preached, man. He, he preached what you have been doing. And what, what, what made it easy was he know you ain't going to change. So it's a simple, a simple, simple sermon. Because you live that. You live that, man. You, 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 I've seen you almost give up. Upset body was t wore out your wife but you preach you didn't change you preach God blessed you God blessed this man preached man he really blessed he blessed 
He blessed his uncle. Come on, give him a big hand. He blessed his uncle. What a celebration. What a celebration. Out of all that we've heard, the singing, the shouting, the praying, the scriptures, the word being declared. The Bible says that heaven shouts when one soul accepts Christ Jesus. So in all that what has transpired, the most important thing is right now. Heaven waits over the banister of heaven, uh, waiting, looking for somebody just to come down and give their life to Christ Jesus. Pastor Carter always says it's as simple as ABC. Acknowledge and admit that you're a sinner. I don't care what you look like, how much money you got in your bank, you, you are a sinner. But B, believe that the blood that Jesus Christ shed paid your debt, paid your debt owed to God. And then confess that Lord as your Savior. See, that confession brings about conviction. Y'all miss that. When you've been convicted, as Pastor Herbert III says, what you was, you ain't no more. You can't walk with God going the same way. God changes us. Uh, he'll change you. But you've got to come to him. Please stand to your feet. The door of our Lord's house is open. He so ever will. Let him come. God calling you. He's calling your name. Don't worry about the people around you. Don't, don't worry about the anniversary. Pastor Carter would be glad to hold off the Super Bowl even if you would just come down to Christ. Come today. This is your day. This is your day. If it's you online, please contact the New Hope Baptist Church and they will accept you in this body of believers gladly teaching you the way of God. This is your hour, your opportunity. The door of the Lord's house is open. Whosoever will, let him come. Come while the blood's running warm in your veins. Heaven's too hot and hell's too long. Eternity is too long for you to spend in the lake of fire. The cross satisfied your payment. Please come. Please come today. But then he didn't stay dead. Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. God bless you, and may God keep you while I'm here. If I, if I may, congratulations, man. I am proud of you. I'm, I'm, I, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm sincerely proud of you. I thank God for what he's done in your life. You're, you're doing a great job here at this, at this New Hope and over, over the whole peninsula. You're an inspiration for all of us preachers. And I wanna just tell you thank you, congratulations. Sister Bab, you look beautiful. Thank you for being by his side. Amen. They'll, they'll never understand what he goes through because you keep him from blowing his top. You. You are his minister. And I thank God for you being right by his side. I, I thank God you never, you, you, don't, you don't push him, you don't press him. You are right there. And I thank you. Congratulations to both of you two. We love you. All right. Amen. Briefly, if you would give our pastor, Lady Carter, few more moments, please, as they come with their expressions. And I was thinking that we're in a rush to go watch this game. It don't matter who wins, but this man, the Lord blessed him. 
for him to have his name on back in one of them jerseys. And him too. So let's give this man of God and this woman of God respect, would you? Thank you. say amen. amen. I, I want to say this. Um, sister, listen, Sister Carter wants me to make remarks for her. Um, she had some surgery, uh, two surgeries in fact, on her, on her mouth and she's healing. Um, but she wants me to say to all of you that she loves you and she thanks God for all of you, to all the, to all the pastors' wives. All the pastors' wives and um, to all the pastors, um, she truly appreciates you and she uh, thanks you for the love that you have showed the both of us down through the years. Um, um, I thank God for her. I thank God for her. You said it, Doc, that um, she ministers to me. Um, she is actually one of the reasons that I didn't walk away a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> he said, now you know you can't go. You know that the Lord called you. Yeah, he called me for just uh, ten, uh, 10 years. And he, she said, stop lying on God. <laughs> so I thank God for her. I want to say this. Um, um, I know that H.H. the third has to leave. Uh, he's, he's going to San Francisco, and he is going to be flying to Africa. And they have ministry there. But let me say this. This is what, this is what his dad yeah. said to me back in 1999 when I got the call from Pastor Franklin that he is re retiring, that he was recommending me to take over the position of pastor. H.H. Yeah. Um, the second said to me, um, this was seven months after we had been in Philadelphia, um, went there to... Um, take over the youth ministry. Um, seven months in is when Pastor Franklin called me, and I was we were there another seven months, and he told me for those last seven months, I'm going to put you through pastoring um, the 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 accelerated course of pastoring 101, and and he sure did. But this is what he said to me. This is what he said to me as I was preparing to come back here and pastor. Uh, he said, you're going to a place that is one of the hardest place I've ever preached. He said that there is a spirit there. There is a spirit there where um, they will hear the word, but they're resistant to the word. And he ain't lying. I'm telling you he ain't lying. Any pastor here can tell you, there's a spirit here that for, for, folk know how to do church. They know how to do church. But not everyone in the house who claim Christ really is about that life. That's what he said to me back in 1999. And he said to me that one of the problems on the peninsula is they live on that beautiful peninsula. And there's a beautiful ocean within two minutes. There's Pebble Beach over here and Carmel over here. And, and it's so beautiful there that people think that because of the beauty of the area that they have this relaxed mentality. They have this comfortable mentality. And he said to me that the devil is just as busy in the Monterey Peninsula as it is in the worst parts of Philadelphia. But because in Philadelphia it's in your face, but in California we got a beach and all this beautiful water, folk are comfortable. And I'm telling you, for 23 years of preaching, he was not lying. That being said, if you know God is in the house, give him praise. If you 
know he's real. I thank God for Pastor H.H. the third. As I was watching him, I could see clearly his father in him. I could see his grandfather in him. But trust me when I say you, when I tell you that that was not H2 and that was not H1 preaching, that was HH3, and he is standing in his own place. He is standing in his own place, and God is using him. I thank God for him. I thank God for him taking the, the time to come out. I wanted to honor him for what his father did for me. And while I'm trying to honor him, he blessed me and he helped me. I thank God for him. I thank God for the memory of his father. I thank God for the memory of his grandfather. I thank God for all these pastors that came out to support. I thank God for my moderator. I thank God for Bethel. I thank God for Victory Temple, for, for Pastor Britt. I thank God for all you who came and participated in this service. Thank God for you, Charlene. I thank God for all of you who were on the program, both on Friday. I thank God for Pastor Granger, who preached last Friday. Past Friday, did a wonderful job. I thank God for Reverend Dominique Dun Dunham, who preached this morning. Let me say this. Lest anyone think that because Pastor Granger preached on Friday, and because Pastor Lust III preached this afternoon that God gave us some, some chopped liver this morning. We had a preacher, we had a preacher of... He preached. And the same God that blessed these pastors to preach is the same God that blessed this associate minister to preach with the same power. And I thank God for this. So I know that, that some of us is trying to get home to watch the game, and I don't know why, because I can already tell you the Chiefs are gonna win that game. And I don't know why you're in a hurry, but we're gonna keep it moving. Once again, I wanna thank God for everyone. On behalf of my wife and myself, I wanna thank God for Walter and the choir. I wanna thank God for the preachers, the preachers, Reverend Welch, that's my, Reverend Welch and I are actually family, but he's my go-to guy, but I don't love him any more than I love any of these other preachers who are here with us. And so I thank God for all of them. I thank God for all of you. Can we give God another hand of praise as we close this out? To, to my chairman, please stand up. Please stand up, I, I know you. I thank God for my chairman. who he is, not, he is not taking Deacon Greenwell's, he's not filling Deacon Greenwell's shoes. He is standing in his own place as our chairman. And I thank God for you, you have done a marvelous job. To, to, to uh, 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 Deaconess Sandra Boone, please stand up. To our chairwoman, I thank God for you. We thank God for our chairwomen in the past, but you have shifted that, that deaconess board in a way that, that has never been before, and I thank God for you. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. All hearts and minds clear. Can we go ahead and stand? Go ahead and stand so we can get home to see the Chiefs win this game. Let's bow our heads. Oh. <clears throat> to our ushers, thank God for our ushers. Give our ushers praise. <laughs> thank God for our ushers. <laughs> forgive me, please forgive me. My wife has the heart of an usher. She used to be an usher, in fact. And thank, that's, that's why I thank God for her. Uh, thank God for the ushers for serving on Friday as well as today. To, to Nate, to Nathaniel and Nathaniel, 
on, on the sound system, thank God for you both. God bless you. If I'm missing anyone, charge it to my head and not my heart. Let's, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our hearts have felt, what our hearts have felt, what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. We thank you for how you moved in this place. All day long, we've been with Jesus. And so we thank you, Father. We thank you for uh, Pastor Granger, who preached on Friday, for Reverend Dom, who preached this morning, and Pastor H.H. the third, who preached this afternoon. We pray that you would bless them all, strengthen them. We thank you for our moderator, Dr. Dunham. We thank you for Pastor Britt, and for all the pastors represented, for all the preachers represented. Most importantly, Father, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you for not only saving us, but thank you for keeping us safe through the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the ministry of New Hope Baptist Church and for minding us, Father, to stand on the gospel and nothing else and to go beyond these walls and to declare to a dying world that Jesus saves to the uttermost. We thank you, Father, by the clapping of our hands, we give you praise. Come on, Rev. Rev, come on, Rev. You close it out. Sister Carter was talking about how nice I look. Thank you, Pastor Carter. He, he, he even laced his breeches. Amen. Amen. Well, hands lifted up. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to keep you faultless before his presence and glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And we all sing together. Oh. 